The invasion of Anzio began in eerie silence. There had been a bloodbath at Salerno. The Allies expected another at Anzio. Instead, they encountered almost no resistance at all. It looked like a Nazi trick. The Allies were mystified. They hesitated. They secured the beachhead and waited. The great prize of Rome lay just 40 miles away. But this time, Hitler had nothing up his sleeve. His ally Mussolini had just been ousted, and his Italian forces were in disarray. The Allied indecision was precisely what the Nazis needed. They regrouped in four days. Then they struck back with everything they had. First came the Luftwaffe of Field Marshal Kesselring. Flying slack into them came 12 unsuspecting pilots of the 99th Pursuit Squadron. Their first real test in air-to-air -air combat was no contest. Outnumbered almost two to one, they shot down five ME-109s without suffering a casualty. It was the clearest possible example of distinguished flying. It was repeated the very next day. Again, they encountered a superior force of German aircraft. This time, they achieved seven victories without a loss. So this switched the story of the 99th 180 degrees, turned it around completely. John Sloan arrived with the 332nd Fighter Group in Italy soon afterward. His first day there, he was hailed by veterans of the invasion. I was their hero. They had come from Anzio. You guys saved us up on the beach, Lieutenant. Sloan had been mistaken for one of the pilots of the 99th. Curiously, his color and his clothes were now the marks of a hero. Of course, I was black. I had on a flight jacket and sunglasses. I was a pilot. After success in Italy came heavy bombing raids on Germany and occupied France. Soon the black pilots were assigned bomber escort duty and they acquired a reputation. All fighter escorts were identified by the color of their tails, red in the case of the Tuskegee Airmen. These red tails, as they were called, were a welcome sight for any Allied bomber. The operations of the 332nd Fighter Group achieved the respect of all of the bomber crews and of the high command of the 15th Air Force. There are few perfect records in warfare, but the Red Tails had one. In all the escort missions flown by the 332nd, they never lost a single bomber. To a bomber pilot, a red tail on his wing looked as good as a three-day pass. As the red tails approached Berlin, they encountered a new enemy. The ME-262 was the world's first jet fighter. It was faster and could fly higher than anything in the sky. Suddenly, the P-51s of the red tails were obsolete. And, of course, no German jet ever had any business being shot down by P-51. Yet the Red Tails did destroy three of the new jets. How that happened is something of a mystery still. Luck was certainly a factor, but the German jet pilots have been described as overconfident. Their machines being superior, they took unwise risks. Could be the jet pilots were simply outdisciplined. While the Red Tails were on bomber escort, black pilots were getting bombers of their own. Back in the States, the 477th Bomber Group was formed. John Rogers of the original 99th was tabbed for duty. They were preparing us to go overseas in the Pacific. And I really did not want to fly a B-25 if I was going to go overseas. If I want to fly, I want to fly a fighter. But no black pilot would ever fly a B-25 in combat. The atomic bomb took care of that matter. History's greatest war had come to an end. Her greatest homecoming came next. Millions paraded in New York, Chicago, San Francisco. But for many of America's returning heroes, there was the morning after. In many respects, German prisoners and Italian prisoners were better treated by our military than black troops who were Americans. Many red-tailed veterans now had flying in their blood. 
but all the success in combat couldn't buy them a single job in peacetime. The commercial airlines weren't hiring. Like Bessie Coleman 25 years earlier, several blacks opted out of the country, recruited by the Argentine Air Force to fight their civil war. It was a very, very bad way to treat returning combat veterans, bad way to treat anybody. Blacks were barred from commercial flying to a certain extent that still continues today. In the military, however, there was a profound change. The integration of the armed forces took place in 1949. President Truman signed the order that changed the military forever. For the first time, there was a civil rights guarantee for a major part of American society. The way had been paved for other guarantees. If the military could integrate, why not the civilian population, surely, in the schools? The Tuskegee Airmen will continue. Fifty years have passed and they're still fighter pilots. They're proud, ambitious, individualistic. They're different from most men and from each other. Some of the Tuskegee Airmen have all but forgotten the deeds of 50 years ago. Others are devoted to keeping the memory alive. They are as different as any group of individuals, but they share a sense of discipline, dignity, and accomplishment. They have been touched with greatness. They are the very best of their generation.